focus on just bringing the best in class experiences to consumers. But what truly is uh, you know, really exciting for us right now is the generative AI revolution and what it's going to be able to do for our consumers. Every product line that we have from smartphone to PCs to XR to automotive is really benefiting immensely from the AI uh, experience. I think of it almost like the next industrial revolution, right? I mean, what you're able to do with generative AI, your, your devices are becoming smarter. Uh, they're able to do things that they were never able to do in the past. And, you know, last Mobile World Congress, we introduced what we could do on the device from a generative AI perspective. Uh, and this year, you can see multiple partners that we have launched with, uh, from, you know, Honor to Samsung, uh, we're very close to launching our Snapdragon X Elite platform that actually is for the PC space. Uh, so just an amazingly interesting time. We have launched very new models. If you get a chance to look at some of what we're showing here at Mobile World Congress, we're showing multi-model AI models, uh, able to understand images, able to understand audio, to make sense of things. So really a natural progression of you know, starting from generative AI in, generating content to actually understanding content. So very exciting time for us. So I think if you think about it, these models that we are talking about and being able to enable AI onto the devices, these are really large models. Uh, and there are quite a lot of challenges that come with that. We have to fit them in devices, number one, that fit in the palm of your hand. I mean, just imagine these models are running in the cloud where people run them on graphics engines burning hundreds of watts of power. And what we are able to do on the device, we are able to run them on devices that are not even plugged in. So we are doing some amazing things in terms of much better you know, AI inferencing for a given amount of power. At the same time, to take a model as large, to move it into the device, and then to process it, uh, requires very special techniques. We develop quantization, pruning, distillation techniques to be able to run these models uh, in small devices like smartphones. Uh, and I think that's really bringing some amazing advantages. The challenges are there, but they are being solved by working with partners like Micron on the memory side, but also new models and new topologies that are coming, like mixture of experts models where you, know, you have multiple experts and we keep some of them resident in DRAM and others not so much. But those are the techniques that we see coming in from model to device to the hexagon NPU that we have, how we're enhancing it, making it better, making it more performant, to new technologies to be able to do more processing for a given amount of power. I think at every different level there is innovation from AI stack to all the different pieces we have, uh, we have put together to make these use cases work best on device. So when you think about generative AI, if you just take the example of large language models, let's say you put in a query in there to be able to ask a question. Typically what happens is that query goes to the cloud, it gets processed over there. But you really want your information to stay private. And when you are able to actually do that entire processing, to be able to take a large model like a seven billion parameter model and make them run on the device, that query stays on the device. Your information stays private. You know, you can take the example of a summarization scenario on a PC. It's a large document. What if that document is your proprietary information for your company or for your, uh, you know, application? You don't want that cloud, you, want, you don't want that document to actually go on the cloud. With the way we are doing it, it stays on the device. Similarly, you get the benefits of much better cost because, well, when you do it in the cloud, you have to pay for the power, you have to pay for that device, a hundred, you know, hundreds of watts of power that's burning over there, you don't have that problem anymore when you do it on the device. It's pretty much free. If you also think about it, there is a lot of information that's available on the device. The device knows about you, it knows where you are, it knows what you're doing, are you walking, are you, uh, you know, stationary in one place, are you in your hometown, are you on travel? All of that information can come together to make the generative AI experience far better on the device than otherwise. Because, and similarly, if you just think about it, right, you can ask a question, let's say I asked the question for an LLM, and my seven-year-old asked that question, the answer should be different. But using that contextual information, we can actually do that. There can be a very different answer, even for that same question. And I think that's the power of doing it on the device. You can actually personalize that experience. And what I envision as we go further is, you know, with that contextual information, we can continue to fine tune the model, 
And as we fine tune the model, the benefit that we get is that model over time becomes a lot more optimized for each one of us. And that's why the experience in the device is so much better. And the last comment I'll make is, you guys probably have all seen the article that has come out, that even to run one LLM query, it's about a bottle of water that is required to cool it, right, as a cooling solution. So when you think through all those aspects, we think there is immense benefit in doing it on the device. And then, if there are models that are larger, that need to be run on the cloud, we still have the ability to be able to do that. So really, the cloud and the edge will work together with a lot more inferencing happening on the device. Memory and storage is absolutely critical because, like I mentioned, what are some of the key things that consumers look for? We want to have key KPIs that are you know, just right because otherwise consumers get tired very quickly. So what we really want is the ability to be able to, for example, get to what we call time to first token, which means when you enter a query into a large language model, you want it to be able to start to respond fairly quickly. Similarly, another key uh, point that people look at is tokens per second. How many words per second can we generate? So both of those things, the way they are driven is, you take a large model, it's written in storage first. Then you move it from storage into DRAM. From DRAM it moves into the SOC, and within the SOC it moves into the NPU, right? So if you think about those steps, first of all, you need a lot more storage because, well, these models are essentially pretty large and you may want to have more than one resident in storage at any given point in time. Then as you move it into DRAM, you want to be able to move that model extremely quickly. So the speed of that interface is absolutely critical. Similarly, when you take it from DRAM into SOC, you want your interfaces like LPDDR5 running at 4.8 gigahertz and you know, with working with partners like Micron and others, we've been able to bring it such that we are able to get that benefit on the device. And I think these technologies will find them uh, such that we need to push the bar, the, the, you know, the bar a lot more to even improve the experience further. We'll have to improve the rates, we'll have to improve the technology. So things like LPDDR6, things like you know, UFS 5.0 become much more important to be able to address the KPIs, to be able to get as quickly as possible to the first token, and to be able to actually, you know, get to very good tokens per second. So definitely our partnership with, you know, uh, companies like Micron is going to be critical to bring these amazing experiences onto the device, but to then be able to have a very good experience for the consumer on the device. We know the, basically the development cycle in silicon is fairly long. So what we are talking about and planning today are for devices that come out in 26 and 27. So we work with partners like Micron today to be able to make sure that we're packing in the right technologies such that the product when it comes out in 26 and 27 is competitive and such that it's actually able to do all these crazy and amazing use cases that we're talking about. So we actually have regular syncs with Micron we find them to be a great partner. They're able to respond fairly quickly as we look at these new models, new topologies coming out, new use cases coming out. And really, as our focus goes beyond just mobile and into mobile and into PCs and into automotive, Micron has been a great partner to be able to enable all of those different uh, product lines for us and all these new use cases as well. So uh, very happy with our uh, progress that we've made with Micron.